It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. A recently released video from Al Jazeera shows an Israeli diplomat and an aide to a conservative member of the UK parliament discussing plans to take down British politicians deemed hostile to the interests of the state of Israel. Let's have a quick listen. He was so happy that he suggested you would take down. <laughs> well, you know, if you look hard enough, I'm sure that there is something that we're trying to find. Yeah, I have some of these. Yeah, let's talk about it. Okay. No, she knows we can't be the one the question. Yeah, it's good to remind me. <laughs> Deputy of our minister. We still want to. Um, it doesn't matter. Awesome. <laughs> still want to. Uh, yeah. No, he's doing a lot of problems. I thought we had. Uh, so I like a good time. a little bit. No? Uh, no. 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 This video, filmed in October of last year, is a part of a wider four-part investigation by Al Jazeera into the Israel lobby in the UK, which shall be aired over the next few days. The British aide, Maria Strizolo, at first dismissed the video as tongue-in-cheek, but ultimately resigned on Sunday once the footage was posted online. A foreign office spokesperson told Reuters on Sunday that the UK has strong relations with Israel and we consider the matter closed as far as this video is concerned. The Labour Party sp spokesperson called for an immediate inquiry into the matter and went on to say it is simply not good enough for the Foreign Office to say that the matter is closed. This is a national security issue, they said. This sentiment was echoed by foreign affairs spokesperson for the Scottish Nationalist Party, Alexander Samond. Joining us to speak about the Al Jazeera video and investigation and the British policy towards Israel and Palestine is Asa Winston Lee. Asa is an investigative journalist and associate editor at the Electronic Intifada. Thanks for joining us today. Great to be with you. So, Isa, let's start with uh, exactly what was revealed in that clip we just saw and what the investigation Al Jazeera is engaged in and what's coming out in the, over the next few days. Okay, so an Israeli embassy agent by the name of Shai Massot was caught on camera by an undercover reporter working for the Al Jazeera Investigations Unit discussing with uh, a British civil servant of how to, quote, take down, end quote, uh, a deputy, the deputy foreign minister, Alan Duncan. Now, Alan Duncan is deemed by Israel to be critical, and he's not that critical. He's critical of settlements. You know, he's, he's, he's said that what Israel's doing in the West Bank to Palestinians is unjustifiable. So he's, he's not um, some sort of radical. This is a conservative government minister. You know, he's, he's second in the Foreign Office uh, to Boris Johnson, the, the Foreign Minister. But here we've got someone who presents himself and who was presented by the embassy as a diplomat, senior political officer was his title on his business card, according to The Guardian. And he was presented in that way amongst pro-Israel activists um, and amongst pro-Palestinian activists as well as someone who was a political person. And yet we've got him here acting in a way to undermine democratic processes in British democracy. So questions are going to continue to be asked about this. I think that the British government is not going to be able to hold this line of that the matter is closed and you know we have a good relationship with Israel. The Israeli embassy are trying to distance themselves from him, but so far there hasn't been any reprimand, you know, despite what the spin doctors are claiming. What that embassy statement uh, yesterday uh, said was that after these revelations, uh, the, they didn't name him, but it's clearly referring to Shai Massoud, saying that he his term of employment it will shortly be coming to an end. You know, if it was the agent of any other government, uh, particularly say if it was a, a, a Russian uh, an agent from the Russian embassy doing similar sort of thing. You could bet he'd be out of here on the first plane. 
Asa, this is seriously coming across as if the Israeli government is interfering in the UK uh, elections and, and parliamentarians and uh, their democratic process here. Um, not unlike uh, what the US is accusing Russia of doing when it comes to the 2016 uh, presidential elections here. Uh, compare the two and uh, what does uh, Israel have to do with all of this? Well, I haven't looked closely at the American intelligence report that was released about um, supposed Russian interference in the uh, U.S. elections, but from what I've seen of it, it looks pretty thin to me. Um, by contrast, there's pretty clear, I mean, there's totally clear evidence of Israeli interference in British, not elections, but democratic processes, certainly, you know, sort of infiltrating itself within the main political parties, throwing up flak, um, sabotaging government ministers. You know, this, this is the high levels of government we're talking about here. Um, government ministers deemed to be even mildly critical of Israel, uh, putting them on a, a, a so-called hit list um, to get rid of them, you know, to, to neutralize them. These are all their words um, to try and even there's even talk in one of the tapes of engineering a little scandal maybe this is what um the civil servant who's in contact with this israeli embassy agent uh proposes you know against alan duncan uh just something that would get sort of get him out of the way and mean that he was not so much a barrier to to their policies and um, these are all things they were hoping for. Um, it's, 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 it's clear that they were up to things which should be investigated. You know, it shouldn't have been left to Al Jazeera to do this. You know, the BBC, the BBC has a long-running uh, investigative program called Panorama. They should have investigated this. Um, Channel Four News in the UK has uh, has done some decent investigations on a wide range of things. Um, they should have investigated this. Shouldn't have been left to Al Jazeera to do it. All right. Uh, what do you think the Al Jazeera's objectives were in doing this? Well, I think Al Jazeera has, over the years, done quite a few uh, reports, investigative reports into Palestine, Israel. Um, the investigative unit on the Al Jazeera English side has done things like the Palestine Papers. Um, the assassination of uh, Yasser Arafat and what was behind and who was behind it, you know, that uh, Israel was behind it and that he was evidence that he was poisoned and so forth. And throughout all, I, I know from hearing from those journalists that throughout all those things, they came under a, immense flack and attacks from the Israel lobby, you know, and a lot, this is something a lot of journalists who've tried to cover uh, Palestine and is the uh, Israeli influence within uh, Western democracies always come across time and time again, and it's the same old accusations all the time. Uh, people are falsely accused of being anti-Semites, um, and this is something that uh, Al Jazeera has encountered as well. So they clearly decided to investigate the Israel lobby itself. So, uh, Asa, tell us more about what's coming in the Al Jazeera investigation in a four-part series. So, Al Jazeera will be airing this four-part series starting on Sunday, the coming Sunday for uh, four days in a row. Um, my understanding is that a lot of the focus in the documentary is actually going to be on the Labour Party. Every mainstream political party in the UK have what are called Friends of Israel groups. So you have the Conservative Friends of Israel, the Labour Friends of Israel, and there's even the Liberal Democrats Friend of Israel, and uh, the shorter, the, the smaller groups have got um, equivalent organisations. And these are essentially lobbying organisations which press within the political parties for the interests of Israel. You know, they say it openly and they do it openly. The, the the issues around it are the problematic issues that are coming out so far from what we've seen from the um, extracts of the documentary that have been released so far. Uh, these groups are not open about the funding and assistance and 
that they receive from the Israeli embassy. They present themselves as almost grassroots organizations, especially in the case of the Labour Friends of Israel, saying, oh, you know, we just happen to be supporters of Israel within the Labour Party. But in actual fact, what, what we've learned um, is that uh, a figure for a figure that named uh, a, a young uh, organizer called Michael Rubin in Labour Friends of Israel, for example, was is caught on camera, according to a report um, that came out yesterday in the Middle East Eye, um, referring to funding that Shai Masot of the Israeli embassy had agreed to set him up with for uh, Labour Friends of Israel events. And furthermore, Masot was talking. Uh, to the undercover reporter unwittingly about even setting up organizations, a new organization, Young Labour Friends of Israel. So what we see here is going beyond, you know, this is this is moving into the realms of astroturfing. It's these are these are not um genuine groups of supporters. These are organizations which are set up to sabotage Palestine solidarity in the UK. Right. Uh, so some of the things that are going to be unraveled over the next uh, few programs uh, of Al Jazeera is already out there in terms of the press. Uh, how is the UK government responding to it? How is the Labour Party responding to it so far? So the response from the government has been to hope it goes away, basically. What they've said is following an apology from Mark Regev, the ambassador, to Alan Duncan, they consider the matter closed. So that's their position. But um, there's been a lot of senior um, conservatives who have gone on the record in the press and saying that this is an outrage. Alan Duncan himself hasn't commented, but uh, Crispin Blunt, another um, another uh, conservative, uh, I believe he's a junior minister, um, who is named in the transcripts and in the undercover footage as being a, a target uh, on their, what they call the hit list, <laughs> Um, of uh, MPs that they wanted to get rid of in their terms um, has come out and saying, you know, that there needs to be an investigation. The opposition Labour Party's spokesperson, Emily Thornbury, has, has called for an immediate in investigation into, um, in so many words, subversion of uh, British democratic process. And the Scottish National Party has gone even further, and as well as an uh, investigation has called for Massot to be expelled immediately. Um, and I think uh, I, I think it will be difficult for the, the government to hold this line when more of the revelations come out. There's in in the Mail on Sunday, which is extremely uh, right wing conservative newspaper. They led on uh, yesterday uh, a big expose on this because they were you know given they were one of their media organisations given the preview of this documentary, and alongside their investigative piece into it. Um, reporting some of the transcripts, they've published an op-ed piece by a former minister in David Cameron, the last Conservative Prime Minister's government, who's, he says, and I quote, British foreign policy is in hoc to Israeli influence at the heart of our politics, and, and those in authority have ignored what is going on. And it's bizarre, because it, <laughs> you can see he's, he's not named in the article, and there's a sort of silhouette Thing going on here, so he's 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 sort of afraid in a way that uh, he's he would be the victim of kind of smear campaign if he came out in the open and said all this. Um, I mean, I think it shows an unhealthy dynamic. All right. Isai, thank you so much for joining us today. There's so much more to discuss um, in terms of the differences uh, within the different parties of the UK and their reaction to uh, Israel-Palestine. But let's save it for another time. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.